Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. And I'll tell you one of the other things. I mentioned that I've um, done some uh, uh, guest lecturing over at Roger Williams University. My brother-in-law teaches a, a class there. And I tell those students to connect with me if, if they want to. You know, you want to connect, you do, you don't, you don't, whatever. Um, I had, so I just did a couple of classes in September, maybe 60 students. I had four of them connect with me with LinkedIn, followed up with all four, said, hey, you know, great job. Two of them followed up with me and I was able to network That's with awesome. my old um, coworkers back at Cardinal Health to connect them together. And who knows what comes of it? You know, I mean, I, I, I certainly couldn't give them a recommendation, but I could give them a referral. And, you know, I, um, I, I've worked in a lot of roles and I know a lot of people. And, uh, you know, so I like I say, if there's an opportunity there, you take advantage of it. OK. So academics, very important. OK, very, very important. And these are the, this is the stuff you learn in school, okay? The what? Academic, technical, practical application, okay? This is the what. Just as important as the what is the where, when, how, and why, okay? So you may know what to do, but you don't know when to do it. You may know why you have to do something, but you don't know how to do it. So you need to be able to connect these two together. In being able to tie the what and the how, and we'll get into that in just a second, is really part of the balancing act, you know, that 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 we deal with all the time. You know, having been a, a boss, there's the old expression, you know, you don't don't go to your boss with a problem. Don't go in your boss's office crying, oh, we got a big problem. I don't know what to do. They don't want to hear that, you know. Now they want to know if there's an issue, but they also want you to come in and say, look, there's a problem. Here are some of the options that I think we could we could try and then take it from there. So it's not only the what, but it's the how, the where, all of that stuff. And you really do need to kind of tie all of that, be able to tie that together. So that being said, there's a whole area of study on this topic and it's called emotional intelligence. Now, Rebecca, have you heard of this at all? Emotional intelligence? Yeah, it sounds familiar. Okay, I, I can guarantee you that if you're in a social, uh, services-ish type of um, background that, that you're looking to get into, you're going to probably get into more of this because this is, first of all, it's kind of a hot topic. And secondly, it's a lot of what we've all done for our whole lives, but, you know, putting some parameters around it, it kind of makes a lot of sense. So we can look in some definitions here. So emotional intelligence, so it's EI, EQ, emotional intelligence, whatever. Um, See if I can drag this out of the way. Uh, it's, it's someone's capability to recognize their emotions, how they connect with others, and control them. And be able to adjust those emotions to the specific situation that you're dealing in. Okay? You know, you're, you're, you're going to propose to your beloved, oh, my God, you want to be as emotional as you can. You know, you want all of those emotions to come across. So... But if, if you're dealing with, with a, now you're married, you've been married for five years and your mother-in-law is making you nuts, you want to be careful with those emotions as you're dealing with them, okay? So it's, it's different situations, different circumstances. We all feel these emotions, but you really do need to kind of control them, okay? Um, another definition, uh, the ability to monitor one's own and other people's emotions to discriminate between the two and then use emotional information to guide thinking and behavior. I, I have some links here that if you're interested, you can go back and look at them. It's a type of intelligence, blah, blah, blah. This was actually one that I came up with. Um, it's exhibiting and applying self-awareness to make life easier, okay? Now, just as we have an IQ, you have an intelligence quotient, okay? That measures your ability to comprehend your hard skills. You take an, an IQ test, I don't know when you take it. I, I remember fourth grade, we took, I think they call it the California Achievement Test. We took this test and the whole school took it. I think we might've taken another one in the eighth grade. And then you get your IQ and it's 80, it's 100, it's 150, it's whatever it is. 
that really doesn't change a whole lot. Your IQ really doesn't change a lot over the course of your life because that's really kind of your innate ability to learn. Now, not to say that you can't learn more. It's not to say that your educational level doesn't improve, but really your ability and how you comprehend all of this stuff really doesn't change a whole lot um, intellectually. Emotionally, however, you certainly can uh, develop that through purposeful activity and ultimately benefit from uh, making your life easier for you and the others around you. As I mentioned, here are the references you know, that you might want to um, get into and talk about and, and look into this deeper, uh, take a little bit deeper dive if you're interested. So all of that's kind of laying the groundwork for today's topic, which is accepting constructive criticism. Real big part of, of EQ of our emotions. Um, it requires us to demonstrate self-awareness as well as consider the motivation of others. Okay, so criticism. The act of passing judgment. Who wants judgment passed on them? Nobody, you know, just, just a, I, I, collectively, there were four, three people here, the hair on the back of all of our necks are standing up because we're thinking of the last time someone passed judgment on us, someone criticized us. It's just dripping with negative connotations, right? Negative lights, destructive, criticism. What's wrong with you? I've told you a thousand times. <laughs> no one wants to hear that. No one wants to deal with that, right? Passing judgment, you know, I, go, I, I just keep going back to that. So criticism can be viewed as destructive, but it can also serve a constructive purpose. Now, and it goes back earlier to what I was talking about, what we say, what we hear, you know, words have meanings, okay? So if I say constructive criticism, you're already thinking, oh, here we go. You know, he's gonna lay into me for something. But if I say, I wanna provide you some meaningful feedback, you know, you're, you're gonna take a step back and you're gonna say, oh, okay, I get it. You know, it's, it, it, at the end of the day, we may end up at the same point, but at least the journey there is, you know, maybe not quite as ugly for everyone involved, okay? So just kind of walk through some of this, uh, you know, compare and contrast what we'd call destructive criticism and constructive criticism. <laughs> destructive criticism, very thoughtless, you know, just what's wrong with you? Whereas, you know, constructive criticism, it's a little more thoughtful. You're, you're kind of taking uh, the other person's um, outlook and, and point of view into perspective. Constructive, destructive criticism can be malicious. It can just be mean and hateful, you know, purposefully um, uh, nasty. Whereas constructive criticism will generally be well-intentioned, especially coming from your boss. You know, I've, I've had a lot of bosses and I've been the boss to a lot of people. I used to tell the people who worked for me, I'd ask them a question. What's your job? Okay. And they would say, well, my job, it's, it's to you know, run these reports every day and, and have all of this stuff done and on your desk by Friday. Or, or my job is to answer the phone when the customer's call and make sure that the product ship out the door at the right time. Or my job is to, um, uh, you know, deal with the plant and make sure that we're not on back order on anything. And I'd say, that's all great. Your job is to make me look good, okay? And don't ever forget that. Your job is to make your boss look good. Now, I'm not suggesting that you just go blowing smoke and say, hey, Tom, you are the greatest guy in the world. You know what, God, I, 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 I count my blessings every day that I get to work for you. It's not what I'm talking about because ultimately that really doesn't benefit anyone. But by you working hard, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're doing the right thing. That makes you look good. That makes me look good. I work hard, I do the right things. It makes my boss look good, goes all the way up the ladder. So really, ultimately at the end of the day, that our job, is really to make our boss look good, okay? So, you know, it, it doesn't really pay for a boss to yell and scream and abuse and, and be destructive because ultimately they're shooting themselves in the foot. All of that being said, and, and you know, we can, all three of us can probably attest to the fact people still do it, okay? Who knows why, they just do. Um, you know, a, a rising tide raises all ships, but some people see it the opposite way and say, well, 
I, I want to bring everyone down to my level. Well, that, that's not really the way that things should, should be done, but that's what happens. So destructive criticism, it, it, it gets on you about the character, not your behavior, but the character. What's wrong with you? You know, geez, it, you, you, you're always in trouble this way. Whereas, you know, constructive criticism is, you know, when you do that, it really generally doesn't work out. Maybe we should try to approach it in a different way. Uh, you know, it, it devalues the, the, the person. It implies blame. Uh, it attempts to control the person who is um, as, as the deliverer of this destructive criticism. I'm trying to control you in some way, shape or form. Uh, and it's basically destructive. Whereas the constructive criticism, you can kind of walk through and um, take it another way. Now I'm going to try something here. Uh, new share. Let me know if, if you can see the yep. whiteboard. Can you see the whiteboard? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And Rebecca, you can see it? Yep. Okay. I'm going to tell you a little story. <laughs> I'm going to call this fella Derek. And that's because that was his name, Derek. He worked for me. <clears throat> very, very smart guy. Um, very smart, kind of high strung. And so he had just, he had worked in sales. He came into marketing, really wanted to get ahead. So he came and he worked, he worked for me. And it's literally the, the second or third day he's working for me. I'm at my desk. I look up, he's in my doorway. So I said, you know, can I help you? He said, Tom, I just sent you an email. I said, okay, well, it's important. I said, okay. I'll be the judge of That's that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bah. Fine. Okay. The next day, I'm at my desk, I look up. He's in my doorway. I said, "Can I help you?" He said, "Tom, I just sent you an email." I said, "Derek, come in. Close the door. Close the door." I said, "Derek, the reason they invented email was so that you don't have to come in here every five minutes telling me that you just sent me an email." But it's important. I said, everything's important. You know, it's all important. If it, And the fact of the matter is, if it's really important, you know, it's the old when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. Yeah. If every email you send me is important, you know, when, when, we're really not going to get anywhere. I said, so you really need to kind of back off of that. He said, yeah, but you know, you don't understand. I'm a, I said, okay. And I went up to my whiteboard and I, I took a marker and i just said derek this is life okay right and i think we'd agree we have our ups we have our downs that's life that's everyone's life all day every day right now you can't live up here because if you live up here where you're always wired and always, you know, I said, you're either going to jump out a window or someone's going to throw you out a window. You can't do that. Okay. And, and let me say, this is pretty verbatim, but this was knowing that I could have this conversation with him. Okay. The other part of it was you can't live down here because if you do, frankly, we don't need you. Okay. We'll get someone else. I said, so you're going to really should be spending most of your life in here. I said, it's not to say you can't visit up here because we all visit there. And sometimes we visit here, but you can't be there. You can't live there. Okay, I got it. I got it. Well, don't you know, after that, every, and I left this on my board, just this. So it just looked like some mumbo jumbo scribbling on my board. He would come into my office about once a week after that. And he'd come over and he'd point and say, Tom, you know what? I'm right about here today. And I feel good about that. You know, and a week later, they come in and say, I'm right here, but this is why, and this is what I'm going to do about it. So just in this little back and forth with me and him, you know, he was able to pick that up and uh, learn a little bit, you know, and I was able to teach him that. And that was constructive criticism, telling him that, you know, you, you, I, I, I love your passion but you need to direct it appropriately. Okay, so here's, here's kind of the, you know, here's the whole punchline to the thing. How can we 
accept constructive criticism. You really need to prepare yourself for this. As I said earlier, and I've said it many times, much easier said than done, okay? I can sit here and lecture you all day long about you should do this, you should do that. But it's easier said than done in the real world. So the first and foremost now, you've got some conflict with someone, your boss, your spouse, your neighbor, something, someone. You need to control your emotions, first and foremost, okay? Listen before speaking. So your boss calls you in and says, you know, Rebecca, we, we, we seem to have a continuing problem with this report. The data doesn't seem to align with what we're doing here. You know, you're already coming out of your skin want to say, well, the, those idiots in IT sent me to a report late or, or, you know, you can't trust finance. Those numbers are always... You've got to relax. You've got to really take that deep cleansing breath and control yourself before just speaking out. Ask for specifics. Don't just, you know, someone says, you know, you're continually screwing up. Well, what do you mean? You know, I need, if, if, if you're going to fix something, you need to know what it is. So you need to be specific. So you're engaging this whole conversation. This isn't just a one way street. This is, you can see this is an actual um, uh, engaging conversation. So now, you know, there are issues. Well, tell me exactly what, what are you talking about? Maybe you can give me an example or two so that I can understand. As I just said, engage in thoughtful conversation. There's back and forth, there's give and take. When you're all done, you thank them. You say, well, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of, you know, th that it was worth your time to try to help me improve because ultimately that's what they're trying to do here. They're trying to help you improve because again, the better you do as my um, direct report, the better I do. As your supervisor, the better my boss does, the better it goes you know, up and down the line. And then plan a follow-up discussion. So don't just let it hang. Say, okay, you know, we had this issue. Push to be able to follow up in a week and follow up in a, in a couple of days a week and say, okay, I know the other day we talked about this. I gave it some thought. Here's, here's some ideas that I had. I'm gonna try to apply these. Hopefully this will get us where we need to be. Great then you carry it out from there, okay? Now, all of that being said, and I started saying this at the front end, there is absolutely no excuse for abuse. There's no excuse for you to sit there and accept abuse. There's no excuse for you to be harassed. There's no excuse for any of that stuff. So I'm not suggesting that you're a, a, a doormat, a floor mat, whatever, that you just sit and take all of this stuff, but there, that you sit and take all this stuff in an abusive way. Sometimes, the fact of the matter is, you do have to sit there and take it. That's the way it is, that's life. Um, unless, you're, unless you own your own business and you answer to nobody, then there are times when you have to take it. A, you don't have to like it. B, you never have to take abuse. Absolutely not, okay? So, <clears throat> what are some of the takeaways here? Undertake this passionate personal insight. Recognize, as I said earlier, you know, maybe maybe I do have some shortcomings. We all do. Um, it, it can hurt to kind of think that way sometimes, but you know, you have to take a step back and say, I know that there are things that I don't do real well. I know that there are other areas that I am real good at, and maybe I can spend a little more of my time helping to develop on the one end uh, so that I can get ahead. A lot of times with companies, if part of this conversation is with your boss and you say, you know, um, I know that I need help with strategic thinking. And I saw that there's this two day seminar. Now a lot of it's online, but you know, you might go off somewhere and, and take a class for a couple of days. Most of the time, a lot of the time, anyway, your boss will say, I think that's a great idea. Why don't you sign up and do it? Okay. So take, you know, take inventory of yourself, know your own strengths and weaknesses, seek feedback. It doesn't have to be from your boss, you know, um, we used to do a thing called 360 feedback. So it would be your boss, your, your peers, maybe if you have people reporting to you, you know, just all around, what are some of the things that I do well? So what are some of the things, you know, that, that I could use help on? If you're sincere in asking those questions, people will more than likely be sincere in supporting you in that. Be open to other viewpoints. You know, I know we all think, like I said, we're on top of the world, but, um, <laughs> 
Other people have have a different outlook, right? Different point of view. This is, again, if we're talking in the professional realm, this is absolutely important because ultimately someone else may have the power to just say, yeah, that's great that you feel that way, but do this, okay? When you find yourself in a situation like that, the only thing you can do is either do it or leave. I mean, that, that's really you know what it comes down to at that point. As you're learning stuff, apply them in your relationships, uh, both personal, professional. Um, then use these as building blocks to, to your life success. I mean, you know, a lot of this goes way beyond just your um, uh, uh, your employment life, but it goes into your educational life. It goes into your personal life. You know, these these are all little rules and and tidbits that can help you out there and demonstrate emotional intelligence. Um, you know, it takes work, not easy, but anything worth doing, having generally isn't easy, right? Some things might come easy to you, but, you know, you usually have to work at it, but to use an old phrase, you know, that the juice is worth the squeeze, okay? And, you know, praise feels good, but critique makes you better. Everyone wants to be told what a great job they're doing, but if I just keep telling you, hey, you're doing a great job, you're doing a great job, and then in six months we say, sorry, Rebecca, you know, we're having a layoff and you're gone. I thought I was doing a great job. Yeah, well, you know, um, whatever. So really, um, always be looking for that opportunity to improve yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, uh, right down the line. So what are some of the benefits of having a high emotional intelligence? Career success, we've talked a lot about that. Decision quality, um, improved relationships, work relationships, personal relationships, you know, <clears throat> a million expressions. It goes back to biblical times. You know, walk a mile in, in someone else's shoes. You know, um, that's really what all of this is about. Everyone's coming from a different perspective, different point of view. And again, not, not knowing your background or what, where you're hoping to get to, but given the, the course of study that you're undertaking now, I think there's going to be a lot of that, right? Everyone's got a different story. Everyone comes from a different background. Everyone's got different um, elements that are impacting them. Um, uh, you know, you need to be open to that and you can just improve relationships along the way. Better quality of life for yourself, others around you and work productivity. You know, ultimately, if you're all on the same page, uh, things work out well. You know, I had a, a young lady that we hired, um, very nice, really liked her a lot. Um, my company, most of the people they hired into marketing came in from field sales from the company. So they had some history in the company. We hired her from outside of the company. Fall River Girl, really liked her a lot, just didn't quite fit in. And so she came to talk to me and I said, well, do you know what's expected of you? In your job? Well, yeah. I said, I'm going to ask you again. Do you know exactly what your boss expects of you? And she was like, well, no. I said, we're done. You're going to walk out of here. You're going to go to your boss's office. You're going to schedule a meeting with them. You're going to sit down and find out exactly what it is they want. Because if you don't know, right, if, if, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there, right? Conversely, if you're on the road and you don't know where it's going, who knows where you're going to end up? And that was kind of the problem. So all of this stuff ultimately can help with your work productivity, which is really what you know your your boss and your management and you you want, uh, or they want, but also what you want. So just that's really kind of it. Just some final thoughts. I always throw these in there because I'm like uh, Grandpa Tom with some of the stuff. But you know, I've talked about this. Life is simple. Life is really simple. When I do these, I do these classes over at Roger Williams, and I, I always, I finish with this, and I say, okay, show of hands, how many people in the room, how many psychopaths are in here? Let me see, how many sociopaths? How many really crazy, off the wall, nuts? Right? No one raises their hand. I said, of course not. And why is that? Because we all know right from wrong. Now, just because we know it, doesn't mean sometimes we don't do it. Right? I mean that happens, and and I'm not talking criminal necessarily, but you know, just sometimes we do odd things for whatever reason. So life is simple. We know right from wrong. We know how we should treat people. We know what we should do. Not always easy. Okay. Think before you act, uh, treat people well, do what you say you're going to do. I mean, uh, you know, the think before you act, especially 
today, I mean, we're all a little bit older, but you know, I'm dealing there with, with 17 over there, 17, 18 year olds. They got this thing, it's called the internet. Came out a while ago, seems to be pretty popular. Uh, a lot of people go on there. A lot of people say and do stuff and put stuff out there. My understanding is that the internet is going to be here for a long, long time. Okay. So when you say and do something and put it out there for the world to see, I'm not only going to see it. My children are going to see it. My grandchildren are going to see it. Your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, it shit's going to be there forever. Okay. So before you do and, and act in a certain manner, just think about what it is. Okay. I've said this, I can't say it often enough. Take advantage of every opportunity. Uh, I talked about this earlier, fail. We're all gonna fail. We all fail some way, shape or form. I've had projects that just blew up. If you fail, fail fast, okay? If you make a mistake, recognize it, fix it, move on, okay? If you found a mistake, someone else is gonna find the mistake. Don't try to bury it. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Um, I used to tell my people, you can't know everything, okay? And I would tell them, make decisions. If you make the worst decision in the history of mankind, <clears throat> absolute worst decision ever made by anyone ever in history, there's only two things you can do. You can fix it or you can live with it. That's all, okay? So when you fail, fail fast, put it behind you. Just don't do it again, okay? Spend less than you make this again, um, more maybe for the younger crowd, but all of us, you know, um, live within your means. <clears throat> then finally, you know, are we gonna be perfect? Absolutely not. We're all gonna fail. We're all gonna, you know, have our issues. Not gonna be perfect, but can you be excellent? Absolutely. You can always do your best, okay? And that's really what that boiled down to. So no, we're not gonna be perfect, but yes, we can be excellent in thought and in, in deed and in what we do. And you know, more often than not, things will work out. And finally, like I said earlier, whatever you do, do it right. And that is uh, all that I have. Well, Tom, <laughs> I just wanted to add something in that you said, and I thought this yes. was very important. And Rebecca, I'm not sure if you see this in your career, but um, you had mentioned something along the lines of, I don't think managers, no, like when they deliver information, they're not specific. So they can say to you, you're not doing a good job. And you're like, what does that mean? Like, I'm not doing a good job by what? Not providing good customer service. Like they're not specific enough. And I don't think a lot of managers have gone through training where they know how to effectively deliver constructive criticism because our jobs as managers are to make our employees better so that they can progress within their careers. As just as much as the employer is, is supposed to make our jobs look good, our job is to help them progress throughout their career. And yep. some managers are threatened by good workers. I've seen that in my um, heyday as well. You know, they're yep. threatened by some people that are organized. They do a good job. They're liked by their staff. They're respected. And some people don't like that. It's funny, Beth. Uh, uh, Liz, I called you Beth. Anyone ever call you Beth? No, you haven't. <laughs> okay. Um, you know that there's there's the I, I've got a million of these expressions because I've been around so long. But you know, to your point about managers, a people hire a people. C people hire C people. C people aren't going to hire an A per person Isn't because that then sad? that A person's going to you know going to outshine them. So you know that you, you're absolutely right in terms of. You know, your manager, you have to respect them as the manager and hopefully they're doing the right things and they got your best interests in mind. And sometimes they're just um, blissfully ignorant. I had, when I started at, at Tyco, when I left the break business, it was in the, auto, in the uh, healthcare business. I had a guy, he was the sweetest guy in the world, just a wonderful, wonderful guy as my manager. He was the director of marketing. He wasn't a marketing guy. He, he had been in logistics and, you know, uh, shipping and, and all this sort of stuff. I don't know how he ended up in marketing, to be honest with you. He was not good at marketing. He, <laughs> he wasn't, he was very glib, so he could, he could talk and all that stuff, but he, he couldn't stay focused on stuff. He was, you know, 
it's great to have those, you know, th thinking at the 30,000 foot, but this guy was at like the 50,000 foot. He couldn't even see the 30,000 foot. He, he couldn't do all that. So when he hired me, it was actually a good blend for the two of us because I covered up for a lot of his stuff. And he taught me a lot of that interpersonal office politics <coughs> type stuff. <clears throat> but at one point I was working for him for, I don't know, six months. And it, it's like you said, Liz, where uh, I'd say, I'd go in and talk to him. I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And he'd, he'd like throw a wrench into it. I'm like, hey. Then you're trying to guess ahead and you're trying to anticipate where he's going to go. Right. And then I do something. And, and finally, I had to sit down with him. I'd say, I always feel like we're on trains on two different tracks. We're never going in the same direction. I, I can't keep up, you know, with, with what it is you want and where you're going. You, you know, you, you either need to be much clearer or you need to trust me in what I'm doing to get what needs to be done, done. And to trust me, like I said, I told my people, make decisions. You make a bad decision, we'll figure it out. Right. But you also need to have the nose that if a decision doesn't smell right, then that's when you raise it. You know, if, yeah. if you realize or if you feel that something's out of your pay grade, then you raise it up to the next level. But if it's something, whatever, do it. And once, once I had that conversation with him, and this was, you know, it was 20 years ago. This was long before emotional intelligence, any of this existed. other stuff that we're talking. Yeah. No, it was just, like I said, a lot of what we're doing is stuff we've done our whole lives. And, and I'm just a, a common sense Get down to it, get to the point kind of guy. And it was just, what do you want? Yeah. What do you want? Right. And whatever you want, that's fine. No. Yeah. You know, and that's what we'll do. But so, I think sometimes managers have a hard time, you know, deciphering what actually they want mm -hmm. you to do. And then yep. and the bad part is, is that that it's their fault that they're not communicating clearly, mm -hmm. but then they'll come back to you and say, you're not meeting your job expectations. But the reason why we're not is because you didn't communicate clearly. So yep. it's like, wow, you know, this is crazy. And, and you do want to maintain your professionalism. But there are some times yep. where you're like, hold on. You're just not but, but like I said, communicating. Talking about that young lady um, who had to go to a boss and find out exactly what they wanted. Ultimately, in life, we are responsible for our own actions. Yes. Right. No, yes. no. Your mom loves you. No one's going to love you like your mom. No one's going to look out for you like your mom. And that's it. So ultimately, if you're in a situation that, that you're unsure of, uncertain of, you've got to ask the question. Because yes. if you don't, ultimately, you're as complicit. But by, you know, you've got crimes of commission, crimes of omission. Right. Okay. And that's like murder and accomplice to murder. You know, I didn't know they murdered him. But yeah, I, I drove and buried the body. Right. Well, you know. Right. You, you have to be able to have that conversation. You have to be confident enough in your own position, though. You can't just go in blubbering and say, oh, no, I right. don't know what's going on. Or, you know. But if you say, look, here's the situation. Here's how I see things. And, and you know, it's ABC, and I think we should maybe do X, Y, Z. What do you think, you know? And, and thoughtful conversation, you know, you engage. And then you get consensus and buy-in, you know? And then it's not only... You know, what, what is it? Success has many fathers and, and failures and orphan, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the sale, the failure or success of the uh, endeavor counts on everybody. Yes. That's it. Rebecca, did you find this helpful at all to you? I did. Yes. Thank you. Now, um, any, I have any a question, questions? Rebecca, um, do you, did you find, I know you found <laughs> out about this because I, I contacted this, the, uh, Elizabeth in the, Women's Center, but do you think that we could get, like you could talk to some other students to get them involved in some of these workshops? They're usually offered every certain times throughout the uh, month at noon. Is that, do you think that's not a good time for students? What are you thinking? Yeah, um, well, I work full time, so I'm doing this on my my lunch break. Oh, gotcha, okay. So maybe they work during the day. Yeah, that's why I thought it would be good for people that are working, you know, during lunch, they could come and so if you could help us spread the good word, that would be awesome. I will, definitely. 
do you have any questions for Tom? I don't know. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. We we're so yeah, glad to get you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you jumping on and, and your participation. Hopefully, um, you know, you, you get some help out of this. And, and if you uh, have any questions, you know where to reach us. We're yeah. here to help. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Spread the word. And hey, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Hope all's well. Um, to you, Tom. I hope you're and, feeling uh, better soon. Yeah, thank you. It's. I'll tell you, I just, not, not TMI, got a little stomach bug on Sunday night. My wife and I both hit at the same time. And I, I like never get sick. I, I just know, right? Don't ever get we sick. before the holidays. And, <laughs> yeah. And so it was, it's just been kind of a little off putting. I hear <laughs> but you. What are you going to do? Well, you're yeah. a trooper for doing this. I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. And, and I appreciate again the opportunity, both of you. And um, have mm -hmm. a, uh, have a wonderful holiday. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Uh, Happy New Year. And we'll catch up with you. All right. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, everyone. See you later. Bye. Have a good day.